Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's me, Tarika Monique, and I am back after a semi-long hiatus. Um, reason being is because I recently went through a major change in my life, and that major change has been I am actually going back to school to become a PTA. Now, first and foremost, let me get this out the way. PTA does not stand for Parent Teacher Association in this case. It stands for Physical Therapist Assistant. So that's what I'm going to school for. Um, I actually made a reaction video way, way back in January when I had got my letter of whether or not I got accepted into PTA school. Um, I'm actually gonna leave that somewhere in the top corner of the screen so that way you guys can check it out. But the reactions I got from that video was I got a lot of views from that video as well as comments from different um, people who are you know applying for PTA school in their areas or are just curious as to what a PTA is or like even how to get into the PTA program so you know I thought I would just come on here and you know just give some of my insight of PTA school as I'm going through the program myself um, so today I just wanted to give a brief overview about the application process and so with that all being said let's get on right into it the worker, she worth it. Go girl, go girl, go girl, ambition. Go girl, go girl, go girl, go girl. Okay, so like I mentioned, this is just the brief overview of the application process of getting into PTA school. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and um, just go based on my experience. I'm going to put the disclaimer that um, my program may be completely different from the program that you may be researching or looking into in your area. So this is based on my experience. Some things may be similar, whereas other things may be different. So I just want to put that out there, you know, before I continue on. As well as if you see me looking down, it's because I have some notes right here in my little book that um, I made. So that way, you know, I can better give you explanation of, like the application process and things. So, yeah. So let's get started. So um, pretty much the application process is pretty much like, OK, so how do I get in? So the very first thing that you want to do before you even putting an application into any program is doing your research, because first and foremost, you want to research to even make sure that there is a school in your area that even offers the program. Because when it comes to the PTA program, it's an associate's degree level, which means nine times out of ten, it'll be offered straight out of your local community college and you'll be doing the program for two years. So before you even put in the application, you need to make sure that there's even a school in your area that offers a program for you to even put in that application. And then from there, once you find that school, there's other different factors that you want to look into before you absolutely make that absolute decision that you want to participate in that specific school's PTA program and that is like number one you want to look into the cost are you going to be able to financially afford it out of your pocket or are you going to have to go to financial aid what's the estimate of books that you will have to pay for each semester do you have to buy specific tools or equipment for the program and things of that sort and then you also want to do further research by if they offer an open house by going to an open house, it allows you to get more of a detailed overview of what the PTA program looks like as far as structure, uh, coursework, things of that sort, even like the outlook of the career. But plus on top of that, open houses gives you the opportunity to even talk to faculty and staff who are part of the PTA program. So that way it gives you an opportunity to get firsthand knowledge and get your questions answered if you have any about the PTA program that's specific for that school. Then you wanna look at the length. So as I mentioned, um, re like how I just recently mentioned, PTA school is again an associate's degree, which means you're pretty much gonna be in this program for two years. But besides just the length, you also wanna look into the structure of the program. So how is this program structured? When are they doing their clinicals? Is that after the first whole year of PTA school or do you do your clinicals like say your second semester of first year? Like how do they structure the program as far as like their classes and clinicals and things of that sort? And then finally, you want to look into see like if they accept any previous college credit. Because if you're like me, I have a bachelor's degree in biology. So I went to a four year institution and got my bachelor's degree. 
So you may be like me, Heather, or even if you don't have your degree, but you went to school and received some sort of college credit, you want to make sure that if any of your classes that you took could possibly apply for you to knock some of your classes off for your requirements of the program, you want to check with the school to make sure that those college credits can easily transfer. Because with some institutions, some of them may not accept credit from a specific different institution, if you understand what I'm saying. So you always want to double check to make sure that those previous college credits that you have taken are able to transfer over without any problem. Okay, so you've done your research, you found a school in your area that offers a PTA program, and now you're all set and ready to go on with your application process. But before you can do that, the next step would be to look into the PTA program requirements that you need to take before you can put in the application. So what I mean by that is, number one, are do they have prerequisites that you have to complete before you turn that application? So for me, like I mentioned, every school has their own variation. So for my PTA program, before we can apply, we had to take four classes as our prereqs. And those four classes was Anatomy and Physiology 1, English 1, an Intro to Patient Care course, and Medical Terminology. And so those were the four classes that we had to take before we could even apply or even think about putting in our application um, for the PTA program. Um, now, when it comes to prereqs, those are like typically your basic classes that you know you can just take even if you're like an undecided student. Now, the one thing that I would recommend is um, besides just the prereqs that you have to take before putting that application, do some further research and look at their program sequence of the classes that you have to take while you are a PTA student. Because if you do that, you might find that there are some courses that are not really specific for your PTA degree. So what I mean by that is like, for example, for me, in our uh, program sequence, there are two classes. There's an inch, uh, a critical thinking and healthcare class and a pharmacology class. On top of you also had to do English 2, psychology, and anatomy and physiology 2. So in that case, I would recommend that if you do find some courses like that that aren't specifically your PTA court, like core courses, I would recommend taking all those prereqs before applying to the PTA program. So that way, when you are accepted, you don't have to worry about adding more classes on top of your core PTA classes that you would have to take each semester. And so that way it gives it more it gives you more time to actually focus on your PTA classes and not so much of your PTA classes plus additional prereqs that you have to take within those semesters. So that's the number one advice that I would give to all prospective PTA students when looking into PTA schools. And Next. On top of just your prereq courses, grades and GPA do matter. I will repeat, your grades and your GPA do matter. And so what I mean by that is, so the four classes that we had to take as our prereqs, the caveat to those was we had to have a GPA of a 3.0 when they calculated our grades from taking just those four classes. So that meant that when you took those four classes, you couldn't have anything below a C. And then even then, if you say like you were having a difficult time with like anatomy and you wanted to retake it another semester, if you withdrew from that class and got a W, that counted as an attempt and you would have one more chance to retake the class for a better grade. So you want to make sure that when you are taking these classes, you're taking them seriously, but also at the same time, you're allowing yourself to have some free space so like don't take all your prereqs at once if you can take like maybe one or two prereq each semester whether that's the fall summer or spring like don't take like a full course like a full coursework for the semester if you know that you aren't able to focus or handle all that all that work at once it's better to have better grades than to try to rush everything and now your gpa and your grades are just horrible and now you can't apply for the program so there was that and then on top of that not only did our prereq gpa for the four courses had to be a 3.0 but we also had to have an overall gpa of a 2.7 or higher 
So what that means is, so say like if you just took the class specifically at that school, any class that you took had to be, your overall GP had to be a 2.7. Or like say for instance, if you're like me and you already have a degree, you have to, they have to calculate and make sure that any previous college credit that you have plus the college credit that you get from taking the prereq courses at that specific institution when uh, calculating the GPA adds up to 2.7 or higher. So like I said, grades and GPA is really important. So you want to make sure that you're on top of that. Then the next thing as part of requirements, depending on which school you're applying for, um, you have to do observation or volunteer hours. Um, so that means that you have to physically go to a physical therapy setting, whether that's inpatient, outpatient, uh, pediatrics, orthopedics, it doesn't matter. As long as you're in a physical therapy setting, you need to go and make sure that you are observing or volunteering. Um, and each school has like their own specific amount of hours you have to do within a specific time range. So for my program, we had to have 40 hours of observation or volunteer time within the prior, within the past two years. Um, and with ours, what was different with ours is it couldn't just be, you couldn't just do like 40 hours of observation or volunteer time in the orthopedic setting. You have to split those times into like at least two different settings. So for me, my settings were so like I did an eight hour, I did eight hours of observation and outpatient uh, in an outpatient setting and then I finished the rest of my observation hours in an inpatient setting at a different hospital. So we had to have our split between two different clinic settings. It couldn't just be one. So you want to double check and make sure um, specifically how many hours and if they have to be split between different settings in the physical therapy field. Okay, so at this point, that's when you're ready to put in your application or waiting to see if you get accepted or not. Um, for me, that was the case. However, from doing my own research of uh, getting into PTA school um, and just from looking at different, you know, YouTubers who are going through the same experience, um, I know one thing is depending on what school you're going to, you might have to go through an interview process. I know specifically for my program, they don't do interview processes um, before you get accepted into the program. It's just pretty much you turn in your application and it's pretty much first come first serve depending on if you meet all the requirements that they ask of you when you are applying for the program. But for most schools or some schools, it just depends. Um, some of them may have an interview process. And um, so you have to be prepared for that. If I can, I'm going to try to find the YouTubers who I watch and put their videos and link below so that way they can get, you can have some tips and advice when it comes to the interview process of the PTA program. Okay, so you did your research. You took in all your prereq classes. You did all the pre-requirements that you need to do in order to even put in your application for the PTA program. You then turn in your application and now you got accepted. So now that you're accepted, you're sitting here like, okay, now what? So now that you got accepted, the first and number one thing that you want to do is meet with your program director. Um, I know for our program, our program director requires us to meet with her one-on-one -on -one as soon as we get accepted before we even start our very first semester at PTA school. So some schools may, your some of your program directors may require that of you. However, if they don't, I would highly, highly, highly recommend that you reach out to them and schedule a one-on-one -on -one meeting um, with them because it's very beneficial as for the number one fact that they're able to give you actual insight on what to expect when it comes to entering your very first semester of PTA school. Um, plus on top of that, they're able to give you advice if applicable so that way you can feel more prepared and more relaxed in a sense. Like so that way you're not stressed because you don't know what to expect. So they give you more of that relaxed feeling as far as like, this is what the program is. This is how it's structured. So that way, like, you know, you you have an open mind and you're kind of ex you kind of have an expectation of what to expect as soon as you start the program. So definitely, definitely. Number one, once you get accepted is, if possible, meet with your program director. Then the next thing you want to do is if they have it for you is attend your orientation. 
by again attending your orientation of course you get more details about uh the program itself but it's like more specific details plus on top of that you know you get to meet your classmates that's going to become your family throughout the next two years while you're in the program um if possible you get to meet some of the second years um and, and by me no second years you might have a mentor mentee program between the first and second year pta students um like i say it just depends on the school and how they structure their program but there's that plus on top of that you might be able to even meet some of the recent graduates who have recently graduated from that program upon you entering and so by doing that not only do you get to start networking with other uh people who have gone through or are still going through the pta program along with you but at the same time you also you know get some insight and you might be able to get some of your textbooks for like affordable price because they're not going to need it but they know that you're going to need it because they've been through those classes so you know you might just be able to get some resources and things of that sort from whether that's your fellow second year or recent graduates then on top of that um depending on how your orientation is structured you're going to probably get more like pre-program requirements that you have to complete before starting your first semester so that's like maybe you had to sign up for your uh semester classes right then and there or like you have to order like any uniform pieces or po and then on top of that documentation which is what i'm about to get into next so now let's talk about your pre-program documentation requirements so what this means is you have to show a lot of proof of almost everything. And when I say everything, I mean everything. So of course, first and foremost, you have to do a background check and a fingerprint scan because you're going to a healthcare f career. And with most health field careers, you cannot have a criminal background record or anything of that sort. Like your record has to be clean. So. Of course, you need to get a background check. Then you have to get an immunity test. Well, depending on the school you've applied for. So for us, we had to get an immunoglobulin titter, titter, titer, one of those tests. It's pretty much a blood draw test. So they draw your blood and they pretty much test to see your immunity when it comes to um, MMR, so measles, mumps, and rubella chicken pox and hepatitis b yeah um so if you had those vaccinations like growing up as a kid and stuff they just wanted to check and make sure that your immunity for those types of diseases or illnesses hasn't dropped below a specific standard um if you do have to take that test i am actually going to put a link in the description of where you can get an affordable test done depending on your area um, it's called request a test and I was specifically put the one that you need for this because my experience was a second year told us about request a test however when I did it I had to get my blood drawn twice because I did the immunoglobulin test I just didn't do the correct immunoglobulin test so it only just tested my immunoglobulin it didn't test for the antibodies so not only did I have to pay for two tests, but I had to get my blood drawn twice. So to avoid all that, I was specifically made sure that for that specific test, I'm going to put it in the link in my description. So if you are that type of, so if you are that specific student that your PTA program requires that specific test, that test for again, MMR, Hep B, and chicken pox, you will get the right test. So you don't have to go through what I went through. Continuing on, so then of course the next thing is you have to make sure that all you all your immunizations are up to date. Um, so specifically, so like for example, your Tdap. If you had a Tdap and it's been within ten years, you could definitely all you need to do is get your booster. However, if you had your Tdap more than ten years, not only do you have to get the booster, but you have to get your Tdap redone again. So you need to make sure that's done. Plus on top of that, as far as immunizations, you have to of course do the annual flu shot. Just so that way you can prevent, um, just con contracting the flu when working with uh, 
participants and clients and patients of that sort. Um, so just to protect you and our and the people that you'll be working with. Um, of course, you have to get CPR certified. Now, depending on the program that you've applied to, they will specifically specifically tell you who they want you to get CPR certified by. So nine times out of 10, it was probably going to be through the American Heart Association and probably not Red Cross. Um, but again, it depends on the program. So um, they will specifically tell you, but because of the type of work that we do, it's probably going to be through the American Heart Association is who they going to want you to be CPR certified by. Then, of course, you have to have proof that you have health insurance. Um, because of course, you know, um, as a physical therapist assistant, um, you're going to be working with patients who, you know, might end up, you know, having, um, incidents where their lower extremity may buckle or something where ha may happen, where an incident might happen and you end up getting hurt. So they just want to make sure that you have your own health insurance. So that way, if anything were to happen to you, you are covered. Um, then of course you have to get a yearly physical, um, so you would have to meet with your doctor just so that way they could, um, sign a form saying that you are physically and mentally able to perform the duties that are required while in PTA school. And they specifically make you do that, uh, especially so that way you are able to work in a clinic. Um, because as pretty much self-explanatory, if you're not physically or mentally able to do the type of work that's required through PTA school, how are you able to perform your duties when it comes to your rotation, your clinical rotations? You're not going to be able to do it, and it's going to put not only you, but the patients that you will be possibly working with at risk. Uh, then, of course, you have to do a TB skin test. Just to make sure that you know you are not, uh, you don't have, you have not contracted tuberculosis. Specifically for my program, we had to get two of them. Um, so yeah, that was fun. I pretty much got poke and prodded this whole entire summer. Um, and then finally, um, of course, with like any type of program, there's your, what I like to call your contract forms. So, you know, those are just a random form saying like, uh, you agree to the rules um, and policies of the program. Then you know you have to sign a form for HIPAA um, and a confidentiality form because while you're working with patients um, and participants, you know you're not able to, you know, just go outside of your job and tell everybody your patients, you know, medical history or business of that sort. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all the documentation. Um, again, depending on the school, some schools may require you to have more, um, but these are just the documentation requirements that my program specifically had us do in order for us to be clear to participate in the program. All right, y'all. So that's the overview application process when it comes to applying for PTA school. So if you guys enjoyed that video, please give it a thumbs up. Um, also, if you have any questions, please put it in the comments section, as well as please let me know if you guys want me to do more videos as I go on through my journey becoming a PTA, because um, I would definitely do that for you guys, but I just want to make sure that that's something that you all would like for me to do. Um, and above all, just make sure you subscribe to my channel as I do plan on posting more videos as time in my life allows for me to do. And please, please, please as well, make sure to share the video. And with that, that's all I have to say. And I will see you guys in the next video.